Well, we are here with a longtime friend and colleague and a entrepreneur and business owner. <laughs> he owns a few businesses or he has interest in a few businesses. But we'll let him introduce himself to us. Good. How, how does one introduce himself? Well, um, your name, what do you do? Name is uh, Charles Kojo Bakna, mm -hmm. right? Um, what I do gets a bit more complicated, right? Because like you said, um, interest in a number of businesses, and, um, but there's a background you know, to, to it. If mm -hmm. we're talking about a career path, that was a totally different conversation mm -hmm. from, and that's where our paths you know, cross crossed multiple yes. times. Well, before that, but mm -hmm. you know, um, professionally. And as a business um, owner, I think the main focus for, especially this conversation, really will be I sell drinks mm -hmm. in two different types of businesses. One is FMCG, where we actually make the drinks and then uh, sell it. And then the second is hospitality. So, okay. you know, um, Ali Bar. When did the Ali Bar open? When did, when did it start? December 2019. December 2019. Yes. That was the year of the return, no? Exactly. Exactly. So it was 20th December 2019. 2019. Yes. Right. Um, so a partner of mine and I, mm -hmm. um, so Kwesi Osekwesi mm -hmm. and myself, um, kind of, you know, wanted to create a, an experience that was less pretentious than what was on the market. Than right, the other um, nightlife places. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. One where you could basically just kick back and just kind of experience, you know, um, life, people, vibes. Mm -hmm. um, but also good food, good drinks. Right. Yes. Um, so, you know, we opened 20th December. Mm -hmm. Literally. So now this is a major um, turning point, right, in, in life for all of us. But this was four months. Mm -hmm. more about three months um, before Corona happened, right? Um, and yeah, we, we both jumped off. I jumped off earlier than him. But we, all, we both jumped off our career paths mm -hmm. to create, to you know, take time off. It was initially more of a sabbatical and kind of building a business during that period. Okay. Um, and yes, it's the but, success of... Okay. So before before Ali Bar, what was the what was the inspiration behind Ali Bar? Because I've seen the pictures of the before and after <laughs> of the place, and it literally was a dumping site or a garbage alley. There was nothing there. It yeah, looked look. kind of desolate and bleak. But then now, when you go there, there's this beautiful thing, which is part of Accra's daily nightlife. Yeah, and it's amazing to put those two pictures together. So what inspired you? One with the alley, and also to convert such a an abundant space into what it is today. Look, that answer cuts across, you know, a number of the businesses that we've worked on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and really, the answer could be as simple as there's so much value to be seen in what others discard, right? Okay. Um, and that's really what it was. So, you know, originally, so my partner, Kwesi, does coffee, uh, Jamestown Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the original focus, to go um, to find a location that actually can give an experience for the coffee. Mm -hmm. um, got there, there's an alley, um, you know, like you said, desolate, you know, alley, alleyway. And it was really a quick, why don't we just build a bar? But one where, so Kwesi and I have traveled you know, far and wide, we used to work in General Electric together. We used to be housemates. Um, you know, he's, um, he's very close to my family. I'm, I'm close to his. Um, and we shared multiple experiences, right, around the world. And most of them had, you know, a couple of, you know, key elements that cut across, right? And always, you know, good food, good drinks, um, but a good vibe, one where it was open, so wherever we went in the world, you're not, you know, you don't find yourself in a situation where you're falling out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people, you know, interact openly and everything. So that really kind of guided, you know, the vibe of um, Ali. The design itself was, 
um, I think you know both both myself and and Kwesi, you know really um, appreciate design, but also okay. the simplicity of design, right? Um, so kind of came about. Um, so was it just naturally. the two of you who put the design, the physical design elements of the place down? Oh no! So we used um, space 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 aqua. Okay, right? but I mean, um, you gave them the vision that they translated into. Yeah. Into this. Okay. Yeah, and you know, and again, you know, when you're going through the design phase, you kind of work hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, they're pretty integral um, to the execution of it. So right before you started the bar, were there doubters? I mean, did you? Tell this idea to people. Oh yes, yeah. Look, um, and maybe we can get into it, you know, a bit um, later on in the conversation. Mm. But my career path has been energy and project finance, right? Yeah. Um, Quasi's trajectory has been oil and gas, mm. right? Um, before that, it was risk management. Um, so, really, building a bar. Right is the last on you know everybody's mind, right? Um, or at best, people will think of it as a pastime type arrangement, right? Yeah. Um, but again, you know, you had so many people kind of just you know it, it's typical, right? Mm -hmm. So comment some some of them in a, from you know from a good place, some of them from a bad place. Um, you know, after Ali was built, you know, you go through the comment section of, you know, the Facebook posts, uh, the before and after, um, and that was during Corona, it went viral. Um, the concept went viral. Um, but you saw a couple of comments, you know, that were, you know, a bit shorter sighted than you would expect anybody to, right? Um. Yeah, you know, I don't even want to, you know, touch on some <laughs> of the comments, but... They were just negative. But, yeah, negative, um, but also, you know, from a, from a, from a shallow point, right? Mm. Um, I think it caught on as a concept and as, you know, after we executed, because, you know, those who appreciate um, not just design, but open thinking, Yes. right? Um, I appreciated it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think on that basis, um, you know, the general concept of it, you know, caught on. Uh, people came in experienced. Um, and, you know, with the experiences they had, it basically then, you know, turned into a vibe that, you know, transformed, you know, the outdoor nightlife space in the country. Okay. So, Accra is known for its nightlife scene. Mm. There are a uh, dozen and one bars right. everywhere you go. How did you, what did you do to stand out, to differentiate yourself from the competition? Look, honestly, we didn't go in looking at competition, right? Um, as mentioned before, we went in to create a space, right, that gave a certain level of experience, right, multiple ways. So, you know, quality delivery, right, so whether it was the food or the drinks, um, the food was is also a very good point because we um, we opened like I mentioned four months shy of uh, Corona mm -hmm. pandemic starting. So you can imagine a whole business and investment, um, all that capex spend, and you know, literally force majeure, act of God, mm -hmm. right? Everything, Nobody sees it coming. Right? Nobody sees it coming. Mm -hmm. um, when the then you know in the, the after that happening, there was a whole lockdown, right, for, a, you know, a good, what, three months yeah. initial lockdown. So that should cripple any business. And it did cripple a number of businesses, you know, a number of hospitality businesses that, you know, stood, stood out, you know, tall, right, mm -hmm. in the market. Um, the food in itself kind of got us through this because the food was extremely good. People started ordering it out, right? Okay. Um, similar with, um, you know, so they always get it with the drinks because then they had a, you know, a window of experience. The four months was also a window of experience that then caught on. So that basically kind of solidified the various aspects of um, the alley. And during the lockdown was when the concept went viral, right? Mm -hmm. So then the design of it, right, uh, went viral. So it was, a, it was a pretty interesting time kind of looking, you know, looking through it. But um, both Chris and myself with our backgrounds kind of, mm -hmm. you know, treat these businesses um, as businesses, as proper P&Ls. Um, so, you know, the management of it kind of gets it through, um, gets it through the tough times. Okay. So 
for those who are looking to get into hospitality, for example, mm-hmm. what what would what would you say is a character trait that you need? Look, it's all about the bottom line for me, right? Um, look, it could be any experience, and everybody has a, a viewpoint, a, um, a package that they, they would mm. probably want to sell. Um, but, you know, it's a, a business is a business is a business. Yes. So it's really the bottom line. Mm. Um, you know, we're coming from outside in, right? Um, so you were not boxed in. We weren't boxed in. Mm. with the norms, right, or status quo in the industry, mm. right? Um, it's not the best advice to say, yeah, you know, go rogue and go, go that way. Mm. But really, if you're able to manage the business well, right, um, you know, keep your overheads low, um, your costs low, you know, maintain your revenue, any business will do well in that period. Yes. And then you kind of figure out how you stand out, right, from a marketing mm. standpoint standpoint, increase the top line, it works, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it works. And, you know, that's for Ali, we could say similar for, you know, Afro, say similar for, you know, a couple of the businesses um, that are being run in parallel. So for you, what, what I can take away is you're saying that you dive in and then figure out how to swim later on. Is that? No. No, so that was us. Not everybody is. Uh, not everybody <laughs> dives into the deep end, right? But you, that's what you um, did. You... Yeah, no, so that's what I'm saying. Not everybody dives, dives into the deep end. Yeah. So you may, you know, you may look at this story, and you know, interpret it as that's the way, right? But mm-hmm. that's not, you know, it's not always, you know, um, a specific cut. It's not cookie cutter across board, right? Yes. People have different experiences, um, different um, variables, right? That you mm-hmm. need to consider. Right, and forces that influence it, right? So, so wait, before you, let me ask you this. Personality-wise, are you a risk taker or are you a risk averse? I'm a risk taker, <laughs> right? Um, Kwesi is a very um, thought, thought out person, right? Okay. Um, you know, I am too, right? But mm. in, you know, from a no, you're not. From a I know you, you're a risk taker. No, you're, no, you're no. Not. So no, but risk taking is actually there's a, there's a measured risk taking. So okay, and so you're a calculator risk taker. Yes, to a very large extent, right? Mm. Um, because there are experiences that you know shape shape you know how calculated that risk taking is, right? Mm. Um, or, you know, learning or reading, you know, there are multiple ways to be able to shape the risk, right, uh, to fit exactly what you can, you can, um, you can bear, mm-hmm. right? Um, but yes, it's not, I don't think, you know, it's for everybody, right, because a number of people have done similar, just jumped and, and opened. Um, yeah, I think a number of things need to align, and, you know, one main fundamental is, um, you know, back to the business fundamentals, right? Mm. Focus on the bottom line. Just make sure the business is a healthy, right, business. Okay. And then, you know, the authenticity of the concepts and ideas go a very long way, especially in this, you know, day that we live in, right? Which um, is very competitive. Yeah, and actually people are far more discerning, right? Um, so the more authentic, you know, you the experience are, the is, more right, the more the... Gravitate you know, towards gravitate you. towards it and, and mm. um, want to experience it a bit more. Mm. Yeah. Let's start with your background and your path before getting into the hospitality industry. Mm. Mm. What was what was your career like before that? Ooh, so um, energy project development and project finance mm. um, with a, you know with a focus on energy, right? So broadly infrastructure, mm. but with a focus on energy. Um, Started with General Electric, um, you know, in the energy uh, business. Mm. Uh, moved on to, uh, you know, a company called Contour Global. Um, it's an American company as well, uh, a billion dollar American company. Mm. Um, key focus was energy, right, project development in the African region. One of the key players, um, you know, in um, around 2014, one of the key players. So moved there to lead the project development for Africa. Mm-hmm. So basically I was building power plants across Africa mm-hmm. um, and raising project finance with it. Um, so did this for, for about half a decade 
and then came back um, came back to Ghana. Yes. So, you know, came back to Ghana with a focus of, still a focus in energy, mm. uh, but now in the distribution space, mm. right? So helped, you know, set up, you know, um, you know private-owned own, private distribution company, mm. um, took over the second largest um, utility in Africa, mm -hmm. and, you know, subsequently, you know, raised financing and then sat on the board of, um, of the distribution company. Mm. Um, you know, as market forces would, um, would, um, would instruct, things, you know, didn't go as, um, as planned. Um, and that's very typical with um, infrastructure projects as well and the yeah. development of it. Um, and that was the point at which, you know, decided, you know, I just take, a, you know, a sabbatical um, to figure just focus on, not figure myself out, really just do a couple of things that was that were on our minds, mm -hmm. right? Um, that we'd always wanted to do, um, but really didn't have the time because of um, you know kind of the workload um, on the career path, mm -hmm. um, and that's where the alley started, right? Okay. But um, let me ask you this: You sound like you had a very well remunerated job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would make you leave that for the uncertainty that comes with running a business? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good, very good question. Um, just, Did you always want know. to own a business of your own? Yeah, no, so I have owned, you know, businesses, a few business, uh, you yeah. know, but not full time prior businesses. To. And you see, and that's that was the learning, right? Yeah. So when it's not a full time business, yes, it may be successful, um, but then it would not reach its potential, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'd done, you know, um, that over the years. Um, it always catches up. I will say this though, I had a lot of explaining to do to my wife, right? <laughs> um, you know, on that, you know, risk taking, yes. right? Um, but that path, again, you know, as we discussed before, was calculated, right? Mm. Um, so, you know, thank God, right? Um, I had, you know, kind of a good career. So I bought myself some time, right? Um, and it will always catch up, whether you do it early or late in your life, mm -hmm. you would always think, you know, had I, right? Um, and, you know, that in itself was not where I was trying to be. Um, so bought myself, you know, a period um, to execute, right? Um, what was just ideas, right? And, you know, um, with a good friend equally, um, um, motivated person, right, Kwesi? So we, we then executed the Ali Bar. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the first. The second, um, you know, was Afro, mm. um, with a number of additional, um, you know, shareholders um, and founders, right? Um, and those, those individuals as well, you know, pretty well advanced in their own career paths, you know, way older than me. So hold on, um, what exactly is Afro, just in case for people who don't know? Ah, so Afro is a premium triple mm -hmm. distilled palm spirit. Uh, and for those that don't, you know, know what a palm spirit is, it's a petition. <laughs> no, literally, right? Yeah, so. um, and I told you that all these businesses were answers to questions. Yes. So the question that actually begged this solution mm. or this, this answer was, why does a petition have to be the worst thing you can drink in the world, mm. in your mind? In everybody, every Ghanaian's mind, Apatishi is almost the, the That's worst. That's a locally brewed... Yes. Um, you know, is you it could, a gin? So it's more of a rum, right? A rum, so okay. a gin has juniper berries. Um, so sweet potatoes, a, stuff like that. So, that, so it's the sweet potato part, you're actually getting into um, you know, the, your vodkas. Vodkas, right? okay. Um, but, you know, the, the juniper berry kind of defines what a gin is. Right? Right. And then you add all the bot botanicals, that's a okay. gin. Uh, a rum is distilled from, so, you know, sugar cane. Um, this is palm, right? Yes. Um, so, you know, the, what's typical in Ghana as well, those two, mm. uh, but this is the premium of, of both, right? Yes. Of, of the two, sorry. Um, and so we kind of, you know, got to it. Th what was interesting was 
Apatishi is not just Ghanaian, right? So mm-hmm. in Cote d'Ivoire, it's called Akpe. In Ghana, okay. it's Apatishi. It has a similar name it, in Cote d'Ivoire as well. Akpe, yeah. Because yeah. it's not... Um, basically, it's, you know, the same people in Zema, yes. right, cross-border. Yeah. Um, and so that be in Togo Benin, mm-hmm. right? Um, Okogoro in Nigeria. Yeah. So along the coastal line of West Africa... West Africa, it's You common. share... You literally share a drink... Yeah. Um, or, you know, an alcoholic beverage that was, um, that, you know, again, was packaged. And yes. I don't want to get into the detail of, you know, how that, that came about, right? Mm-hmm. But was alienated, right, um, as an inferior drink um, sure. and a dangerous one, right? Sure. Um, I mentioned before mm-hmm. that the, um, both businesses were an answer, right, respectively, mm-hmm. to questions, right? Mm-hmm. So for Afro, um, this is, you know, a triple distilled premium organic palm spirit, right? And, you know, further infused with, you know, fruits, um, herbs, and, you know, for here, spices, Mm -hmm. right? So you have two variants, um, one that's a bit more fruity, you know, Mm -hmm. aromatic. Um, The second that is um, spicy, you know, packs a punch. So with ginger and, you know, huintia? Yes. Yeah. So ginger and huintia gives you the Afro more. Mm. And then the um, the newbie is pineapple, passion fruit, rounded with honey. Okay. Right. Um, but it really, you know, was a, uh, an answer to a question. Mm. Why does a patishi have to be the worst thing you can drink, right, in the world? When, you know, Africans think about it. You know, as um, you know, I mentioned in a previous conversation, um, it was, it's, it's known as Akbe in Cote d'Ivoire, right? A patishi in Ghana. Uh, so to be in Togo Benin mm. and Ogogoro in Nigeria. So we basically share a cultural, you know, um, history, right, um, with regards to this type of drink, right, um, or beverage. And the fact that, you know, there are bad vodkas in the world, there are mm. bad whiskeys in the world, uh, but all you need to do is really refine it, and that's what makes it premium. So we never really find a premium African liquor sure. on the market globally. Right um, and or spirit, right? Because um, you know we can talk about Amarula and everything as liquors, right? Um, so that's the vision so for Afro to be a premium. It is, it is right in all all respects: the look, the feel. It, the, it does look the, premium. That I'll give you. And the content itself. So it you're t- drinking it, right? Um, in all respects, it's it's premium, right? Mm. Um, so in terms of you know developing a premium product, mm. hands down, we have. Mm. Um, what the what this would be, right? Um, and we're having this conversation on this show, is what Hennessy was to hip hop, mm. right? That the rock continued. Yes. This will be for the African sound, mm. and the really the African identity, mm. right? Globally, when you are experiencing, um, you know, a beverage, you know, whether in your own home or, you know, nightlife or, or you know wherever you find yourself drinking. Um, because you notice that the alcoholic beverages just follow culture yes. and the cultural movement, right? Yes. Um, and we find ourselves in a very, you know, interesting window, right, mm. um, of time um, where Africa is in fashion, yes. right? Um, so not taking advantage of this to have what is most um, relevant culturally, mm. right, to most tribes in um, in Ghana, for instance, and really across West Africa, where naming ceremonies is apetishi, that's mm, that poured, or that's put on the tongue, right? Mm. So from birth all the way through all fest- festivals, you know, celebrations. And all major significant occasions as well. Exactly. You know, even traditionally, for example, because like you said, drinks serve as a platform yes. for bringing families, for uniting exactly. people and so on. Let me ask you this. Before making Afro a premium spirit for Akbateshi, were there other brands or did you know of any other brand doing the same thing? Oh yeah. So I think um there were there were, you know, one or two brands mm. right doing similar, right? Mm. Um but not on the scale that Afro is now. Um no, so definitely not on the scale and you know honestly 
the detail shown to the product itself. No, see, it's not always the packaging, right? Yes. Um, the content itself is what holds the premium value, right? Um, you know, you can always have the shell that looks good, but then, you know, once you get in, it needs to match. Uh, and I, I don't think, you know, any other brands focusing on the same, um, you know, uh, base product that we're talking about. I love what you matches. said about having, you know, the content or what's inside being of value as well. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the key fundamentals to businesses. Exactly. Let your services match the hype. The hype. Exactly. Otherwise, it goes bang. Exactly. From day one. Exactly. And, you know, as we, met, we were discussing before, that's, those are the business fundamentals. Yes. Right? Um, and if the business is not, you know, delivering on a service, is not, you know, focusing on, um, you know, the numbers, right? Mm. Very quickly, it's either a go bust mm. or people will lose interest, leave, you know, um, you know, the service, and then it will go bust, right? Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's always back to the business fundamentals. So how, how old has Afro, I've, I've seen, I've been seeing it on shelves yeah. every single place. And I mean, I've been telling people who know me, like anytime I see it somewhere, I'm like, oh, that's my friend's drink. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's kind of weird because I've known you for several years. Yes. So I, I go, I was in this remote resort in Ghana somewhere. Yeah. I'm not going to say it. Yeah, don't worry. It was, say but then I saw Afro there. Yeah. I was like, what's so anytime I see her from like what's Kojo Bakner doing here? <laughs> that's, that's no look weird. and it's, you know, this is a combination of um you know different uh, levels of um of business experience coming mm. together, right? So that, like I said before, the shareholders in Afro mm. are you know, some of the, you know, um Top industry business, industry yeah. leaders, yeah. right? Um, you know, in infrastructure and finance, um in banking um, across Africa, mm -hmm. right, leading major um, institutions. And one key um, partner as well is uh, Peter from P-Square. Yes, I saw the yeah. media release that you partnered with yes. Peter from P-Square. And as a shareholder, right? Mm -hmm. So this is not even a, you know, it's not a brand, you know, ambassadorship or, or anything, you know, of the sort. And we have those relationships, right? Um, and we really cherish those relationships. You know, Peter's, Peter's conversation, you know, started, you know, way before the product was even built, right? Um, and, you know, with a couple of the founders, the conversation was really, you know, how then, you know, you look, as I mentioned, you know, the Hennessy, the Ciroc, you look, you know, West, and you see the, um, you see the cultural movers, right, backing a, um, a product that for them was theirs, right? Um, and as much as the company itself may have been owned mm. by um, others, right? Um, they made that push. This, in you know, is literally made in Africa by mm. Africans, mm -hmm. um, to be consumed by Africans, mm. but appreciated globally, mm. right? Um, and you know, Peter, one, you know, that you know, it really begs the question very quickly: why, why Peter, right? Mm. Um, why not? You know, you know any other you know um, current, right? Um, um, uh, young, right? Um, artist, mm. and you know, I would always push the the conversation. We we interact with everybody, right? We we do it with everybody. But you think of um, you know people like Dr. Dre, mm. like P Diddy. They weren't at the at the prime of their careers as young, you know, um, folk, when they built the brands that made them billionaires, mm. right? Or helped build the brand that made them yes. billionaires. And it's, it's a testament to building a good network, right? Um, so they did that in their field, right? Um, we're doing that here. We're sitting here mm. having a conversation. But, you know, TJ, you and I go way back to high school, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you're a lawyer. We worked on multiple transactions. We have multiple friends that fit in that same ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. um, the idea is, you know, building a network that actually can support you when you're building something. So rather than going with um, top dollar, which we, you know, we will not even, you know, um, try competing with, you know, global uh, heavyweights in FMCG, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a reason why they're global, he you know, heavyweights um, to pay for the same services 
dollar for dollar, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if we're Africans and if we have the network, then we have you know, proper value in the network to actually build brands like these, right? So Afro in itself may, have, may be a drink now, mm -hmm. but really it's a concept, right? It's a concept that traverses a, um, a drink in itself, but more of one that says, together we can, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, the tagline for this is pride, passion, and power, mm. right? Um, you know, pride in who we are, mm. um, the passion to actually, you know, uh, improve and develop, right? right? Yeah. Um, and the power and unity, right? In, mm. in togetherness, in, you know, working hand in hand to actually make it happen. So one thing I take away just, I took away from this conversation, this mm -hmm. past one was, when you're building a product, a business, or a brand, or even if you're putting out a service, mm -hmm. who you partner with is essential. Yes, it's all calculated. All calculated. You have to partner with somebody who has skills and expertise in the areas in which you lack. That's, that's really it, right? Because, you, you know, no one person, you know, can be all or know all, right? Um, so if there actually is a need for a partnership, whether it's a direct partnership or whether you're hiring resources, mm -hmm. the idea is for them to fill the gaps right, that exist. Right? Um, and it takes you knowing yourself or knowing your business to be able to then um, find the right resources to fit. And also being honest with yourself. Exactly. Because most entrepreneurs and most businesses I come across in my consultant life, mm -hmm. People aren't honest with themselves. They don't yes. admit to the faults that they have mm -hmm. or the areas in which they lack. Mm -hmm. So once you're honest with yourself, then you can partner with somebody who doesn't have or who has the skills that you don't have. Exactly. Whether on a transaction or, you know, um, or brand in building business, and business brand building. building. It, it's, it's all the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's why you would have a... Uh, you know, other global brands coming in, you know, not even the macro influencers, celebrities, but micro influencers, right, who have a following and are doing their own thing, right? Mm. Um, they've built, you know, their following on the back of who they are, mm. right, or who they are packaged to be, right? Um, and for that, people find the value, uh, or these brands find the value um, to leverage, right, these people um, for a wider reach, mm. you know, they can, they can pay top dollar wherever else. Uh, we can pay top dollar wherever mm -hmm. else. Um, but then you do still need right, um, people to actually make it work. It's always an ecosystem. So if you were to pick one single word to sum up your experience with Afro, what, what would that word be? Just one. Yeah. Um, one. You can think about it for some time. I'll give you yeah, a yeah, yeah. Just I don't moment. know why Takashi came into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but you have to but, break down. I think that's... that's yeah, down. no, but that's not it. That's, that's not okay. it. That would not be the word. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you give, me, give, me, give me a minute. Resilience? Is that what it means? So, as in, if you're translating Takashi, Yeah, Takashi. Right? But, but that, but, you know, that, that is one word to I'm describe I'm thinking either... Journey. No, aggressive wouldn't be the word. No, I so... Think resilience, or... So, um... Yeah, so it's a kind of blend of resilience, right? Uh, you know, persistence, right? Persistence. Um, that's what sums up Takashi, right? Yeah. Um, and really, yes, I, I, I do believe that's one word that kind of describes the journey. Persistence. Right? Um, but if it's one word to describe the product, you know how right now when you put a you know, hashtag before, you know, um, you know, a tagline, mm. that tagline is written as a word. Mm -hmm. I'll just say hashtag heritage in a bottle. Now that's one <laughs> word. <laughs> and, uh, um, so but yes. The yeah. journey, it's No, so the journey, the journey is definitely persistence, right? So it's, you know, it's a new industry. Um, it's, you know, open-mindedness to know where you lack, like we, you know, we, we discussed. Um, you know, the, the, the benefits, right, of having you know, a network or a, you know, even, even you know, uh, more granular, a group of people like-minded um, with enough, you know, um, global level of experience, right, to actually execute an idea that has 
culture and heritage at the heart of it, right? Yeah. And improving it, and you know, basically, you know, making it accessible globally, right? Um, all that put into action, right, in a terrain, you know, that is um, the, that may not have been known, mm -hmm. right, to most in that group. Right, definitely takes persistence and resilience to be able to get through. We won in just a year the Spirit of the Year Award, oh, right, uh, for Ghana Beverage Awards. So that was a major feat yeah, for us. Yeah, that's very impressive. That was a major feat for us. One thing I've asked people who've come on this, you know, uh, podcast, YouTube mm -hmm. show, whatever you want to call it, is what kind of personal experience was the pandemic for? Ooh, for me it was a good experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, take out the the fear of the unknown right mm. um the reason why it was a good experience is i just had a lot of time with my family my uh, my second child was born in the pandemic mm. right at the beginning of the pandemic mm. right um so it just allowed you know a lot of alone time um you know everything was at, at a standstill right um allowed us to catch a break Literally, right? Mm. So catch a break as an individual, but catch a break as a family as well, right? And then, you know, just kind of enjoy the thing, the little things that you overlook, right? Um, on, you know, in this, you know, hamster wheel of life, right? Um, so yes, it, it definitely was. For, from a business standpoint, again, you know, you had um, a business that had just opened, one, you know, that was really in the product development phase, um, during a pandemic period, right? Um, there are definitely fears, especially when... So let me, let me say this. Right before, so I gave a talk at Harvard on energy. Mm. On my way back is when, um, you know, the first few cases were recorded in Ghana, right? So that was the tail end of my, you know, my, before I paused, right? I haven't really... You know, so I still have a consulting business and everything, but before I, I you know, switch focus to developing these businesses. Um, so you still have a bit of, you know, concern, right? I won't push it straight to fear, but concern, right, of, um, you know, the, the outcomes of the decision that you just made, mm -hmm. right? Um, in a time where, you know, an act of God, you know, nobody has any, had any idea this was going to happen, this was going to happen at the degree that it happened. Um, but, you know, you put all that, you know, gloomy, uh, what do you call it, um, um, background aside, and it was really a good time to catch a break, right, um, and really appreciate the little things in life. That's, that's interesting. It's pretty good. So... I'd like to touch on the third business in which I know you're involved in. Mm -hmm. It's, as a matter of fact, it's Neighbors with the Alibar. And it's across, yeah. it's across yeah. most Instagrammable <laughs> um, cafe right now. Yeah. You just search the hashtag Jamestown Cafe and it pops up. No, well, it's yeah. Jamestown Coffee Roasters. Jamestown Coffee Roasters. Exactly. But the cafe is... No, so Jamestown Cafe is... Um, by in, Jamestown Coffee no, Roasters. in Jamestown. Mm. So Jamestown Coffee Roasters is is the Instagrammable, um, most Instagrammable that you, you you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so look, I you know for Jamestown, it's it it's a um, it's definitely an experience you know on the back of um, the coffee Jamestown coffee, mm. right? Um, and you know kind of a again a combination of experiences, um, culinary experiences around the world, right? Um, but for Jamestown, you know, the coffee itself is, you know, Quissy's, um, you know, second born, right, yeah. as a coffee business. So he, he had one that was upcountry coffee and then, um, mm. James, you know, Jamestown. Um, and, you know, he's, I need to get Quissy on this show, right, yeah. to talk heavily into, you know, Jamestown coffee itself, the roasting, um, you know, um, starting one of the, well, definitely not the first, but one of the first self, um, uh, sorry, African, Ghanaian. Ghanaian, yes. Ghanaian, Ghanaian, right? So I need to get, I need to get Kwesi here, right, mm. to discuss, 
you know, um, the economics James, or coffee. No, look, and James, and then really the Jamestown coffee experience and journey, right? Yeah, sure. um, and then that basically will, you know, come around to the Jamestown coffee warehouse as an experience. I love, right? I love what they've done with the warehouse because normally Ghanaians are not very big coffee drinkers, mm -hmm. but by creating a space mm -hmm. in which there's food and you can come and share experience with either family or friends. You introduce Ghanaians to coffee, which I think it's a marvelous concept. Mm. You know, make it give yeah. give it to them in bits and pieces. You know, and that's what um, he's and done. then you know, look, everything is uh, you know kind of presented in a way where people can accept it um, or appreciate it, right? Appreciate, um, I think appreciate it is yeah, more appreciate of it a is, is 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 it right? Because this is Voltarian coffee, yes. right? And this is robusta, right? Yes. Uh, robusta is harsher, you know. Tougher, mm -hmm. um, you know, harsher and a, you know, a tougher. Compared, compared to Arabica. Exactly, yes. right? So Arabica is a far smoother and everything. But if you ask people who come and experience the, um, um, the space, right, the coffee there, they love it, right? Mm -hmm. They love it over and above a number of Arabicas that they've experienced. And these are, you know, um, well-seasoned uh, coffee drinkers, right? Yeah. Um, uh, myself, I'm not, you know, a heavy coffee drinker, mm. right? But I, you know, one of the main, one of the, you know, first brands, coffee brands that I really liked and appreciated was Jamestown. And it's all, it's all down to picking the cherries um, or the beans, right? Yeah, the beans. Um, so cherries to beans, beans to, to the actual ground. roasting. Yeah, to the roasting. So the roasting, um, and you know, Quasi needs to talk through it because, you know, he loves it. He he loves the 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 roasting. He's um, very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You can you can tell from the output. So I, I'll leave the that, Jamestown the coffee James roasters Stella, for when coffee yeah, yeah, Kwesi comes on the show. Well, and and trust me, that would have been you know a very good decision <laughs> on your. We'd we'll, we'll love your to part. have him here. But no, no, definitely, because he, again, you know, this is somebody who was, um, you know, country manager of a, a big multi-billion-dollar um, oil and gas multinational, mm -hmm. right? Um, and hopped off to do the coffee hospitality the same way you know I hopped off to do similar. So you guys so both hopped off to explore to certain territories. To be led by passion. To, and be led by passion, yes. Sure. And uh, executed the way we know how, right? Uh, you know, global standards um, and you know, end to end execution. Doesn't doesn't entrepreneurship take a lot of self belief, and it, it kind of sometimes get lonely because only you know your vision. So, you see, that is a very good description of it, right? Um, but, you see, everybody jumps up and, you know, says I'm an entrepreneur. It's overly romanticized these days. Yes. I think. And, you know, look, you put that aside, right? Clear the foam, and you will see very clearly what, what who does, right? Mm -hmm. Heck, this is an FMCG product. This is a drink. We make drinks, right? Uh, put the whole entrepreneurship thing aside. Um, you know, it's a bar. We're in a hospitality business. That's what it is, right? Um, behind the camera, right, is a videographer, right, mm. and a director, mm. right? That's what they do. But he may have a business that executes that. You're a lawyer, right, as well, right? Um, you're doing this um, to experience in people's you know, or, or, or discuss people's um, experiences, right? Disc discuss people's experience building businesses and ex to pick their minds. Ex no, ex exactly, yeah. right? And, and, you know, all yeah. these can be, um, can be termed entrepreneurial, right? Um, but like you said, it's, you know, overly, overly romanticized. romanticized. Yes. And, you know, the conversation it stays, you know, pie in the sky, right? As, oh, you know, an entrepreneur, he's an entrepreneur. No, the question is, what exactly is it that he is doing, mm. right? Like you said, is it the passion, right, that led him to do what he wanted to do? Um, is it, you know, are you going to make the same, um, what do you call it, um, are you going to get the same output by doing the same thing he did, right? Mm. Um, or do you focus on what you can do best, what you want to do? Mm. Or maybe you're just not cut out for it, right? Mm. And it's not... You can't say entrepreneurship is, um, you know, one of those, um, you know, fallback plans, right? If I don't get a job, then, you know, I'll be an entrepreneur. Yeah. What is an entrepreneur, 
Mm. You, you get where I'm going with this. Mm. Who is an entrepreneur, mm. right? Um, and you know, if you ask me to define it, it's, you know, with some of the words you used, right? It's a clear focus on delivering value, right, um, in the form of a product or service that I feel one needs to be passionate about, mm. right, and um, business savvy enough to be able to execute it through. That that in itself could you know define entrepreneurship. But so for for those, for example, sitting on the fence, mm -hmm. not sure if you know entrepreneurship is for me or isn't for me. Mm -hmm. What would what would be your advice? What would you tell them? Be the deciding factor if you want to do this or you don't want to do this. There's always that and, and turning that, point, mm -hmm. right, for everybody, right, where a decision needs to be made, right. Um, when the when the you know at least from my experience right um, at least from my experience when the stars haven't aligned yet right when you don't have and most of the time it, it doesn't align fully right but there's you know a, there are few of those blocks that will be in line right um, or in place for you to be able to execute so it's not about just jumping right on the back of pure passion, right? It's about, as we discussed before, you know, a calculated risk. approach yeah. to it, right? Um, you know, one would call it, you know, risk, because it is a risk, right? But in a, in a calculated fashion that allows you to be able to address those risks or mitigate those risks, right, um, to the best of your ability. So there's, there's little downside and, you know, more upside. All right. Well, thank you for coming, and it's been a great conversation. Um, Thank you, TJ. Yeah.